Hey everyone, it's Sean's Trains. We're back for another review. This time it's something a little bit different. I want to talk about buying used rolling stock. The things that I look for, the things I stay away from, and maybe some things to do when you get it. So let's take a look at some stuff I bought recently, and we're going to take a look at the models, the prices, and what we expect, or what I expect anyways, when I'm buying used model trains. Let's get into it. So here I've got a really nice spread of everything I've bought over the last probably two months for used model trains. In fact, almost for the last year. Uh, I buy very few used model trains. If I do, they have to be in pristine condition for uh, a pretty solid price. I'm willing to pay a fair price for a used freight car, but it's got to be in good shape. You get new stuff that's broken up from time to time, so if it's used and you're asking, you know, $35, $40 for a scale trains or tangent or exact rail uh, freight car, um, it's got to be in excellent shape. If I can keep my stuff in the same or better shape than I got it from the factory, you can too. Unless you sell it for a significantly discounted price, that's what I expect. Uh, some stuff, obviously, if you go on eBay or if you're on Facebook Marketplace or going to shows and you're looking at collectible items, something that was very low production, very old, very desirable, or just plain popular, you're going to pay more than less. Um... It's easy to laugh and poke fun at people and react to people's posts when they're asking what seems like an obscene amount for something, but to them, maybe it's worth it. Maybe they know what that's worth to the right person, and that's who we're selling to. You, me, them, anybody. We're selling to the person that we can get that car the most from. So when I bought these cars over here that are not in a box, except for this guy, this guy had a box just like this one, I only paid $10 a car. Now you can see the weathering job on it. I think the weathering job is pretty good. It's better than anything I'm doing right now. I only paid $10 a car. I got this from a, um, a gentleman by the name of Steve who's at a lot of southeastern, um, and, and I should just say Wisconsin and northern Illinois uh, swap meets. He's always got white boxes out. He's got some amazing deals on open box, or excuse me, <laughs> um, boxless models. So this guy's got, you know, a fair amount of detail on it, but it's got a bunch of stuff broken. We'll get to that. But make sure it's a value to you. That's the biggest thing. When you're buying or selling used trains, what is its value to you? If someone's selling something dirt cheap, it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with it. It just doesn't mean much to them. There's just no value in it for them. For me, <clears throat> it depends on what it is. These I picked up because they fit into my era, location, or it was just too good of a deal to pass up for the weathering. I want to get more and more weathered stuff, and this is cheaper than getting what I have weathered at ten dollars a car. You, I, I don't see anyone doing this kind of weathering work for ten bucks a car. So let's get into it. We're going to break down a few things. I'm going to show you the ones I'm most proud of, the ones I'm most ashamed of, and the ones that need modifications. Let's get into it. So the first car I want to talk about is the Sulang Gondola. I bought these. Um, actually, I bought the pair. Um, for $15 each, uh, they both had boxes, which adds a significant amount of value and protection when buying these, and they were weathered. Um, I, they have metal wheels that are weathered. I mean, they're beautiful cars. They're going to be used in pulp wood service, so I'm going to be making beautiful loads for these. Um, they're weighted pretty nicely. Um, I mean, the underside doesn't have too much for weathering. You don't need it, but, you know, the trucks are done real nice. Let me get a little bit closer for you. So you can see this is just a nicely done car. It's very tasteful, looks pretty good. I think this would fit in um, in just about any era except for when it was new. So you get a little bit of dirt on the inside. I mean, a really sharp car overall for $15 with the box. That was an easy decision. Um, John, who has sold this uh, to me, uh, he was selling some of his and his father's collection at the show. And it was just a so many amazing deals there and there are people that are trying to little ball them yet and I'm glad he held firm to his prices because that oh my goodness John those are amazing prices I wish I had more money because um, I would have snagged up more stuff but just beautiful that car 10 out of 10 worth it easy just so easy the next car I want to talk to you about is this Hydra Cushion Southern Pacific double plus or double sliding door box car so overall, it looks like it has a beautiful weathering job. The roof was nicely done. The trucks are done. The couplers are done. The underbody's got a little bit of weathering to it. You can see it's got metal wheels, KD couplers. The only thing I don't like about this is the coupler boxes. 
These metal plates have a tendency to bend, warp, break. Uh, when, uh, I'll probably end up putting new couplers on this because these aren't, they don't stay centered very well. I do like my semi-scales. This will work. This will function. This will be fine in the meantime. Um, but I'll likely end up using my A-line uh, tap and die set to drill this out, put a, uh, put a screw in here. They'll use this, reuse this cover, but it'll be a more secure fixture to hold that coupler in. Um, this car cost me a whole $10.00. Uh, I thought it had a very nice weathering job. If you look at the end, you can see that it's even got uh, the marks here from wheels on other cars across from it kicking up dirt. Just very nice, very consistent. Um, I, I've seen worse weathering jobs on $30 and $40 plus freight cars. I mean, this was excellent. This, this was a no-brainer. So we're going to go over another car that I had higher hopes for, and we'll see that right now. So this car, I believe, was a branch line kit that someone built. Uh, this beautiful car had tons of detail on it um, at one point in its life. And you can see the ends where the ladder is broken off here. Um, you can see the stirrups down here are broken or bent. The weathering job is very nice. But you can, you can see that the roof walk there is, is bent out of shape. The roof's nicely weathered. Um, or fairly nicely weathered. I mean, this car is rough. This this car is rough, but it's got more detail than the rest. It's got all hand applied details, uh, sharp paint, and you know what? It was ten dollars. I'm not gonna care if this car gets knocked over, smashed, crashed, put in the dumpster, or dropped on the ground. Um, the last two of the dumpster in the ground, I might actually care. But this car, if it gets damaged, scratched, or whatever, I'm not gonna be upset. It's got metal wheels, metal couplers, a fair amount of detail. Most of that you won't notice anyway when you're just operating trains or if you just see it going by in a train, it's going to be fine. So this car overall, I would say a 7 out of 10. Um, it would have been nice to have those little details on the bottom, but you still got the hand applied details over here. I mean, when you're just running stuff, you don't care too much about the details. If you're taking pictures, if you're a rivet counter, yeah, the other stuff's great. But you know what? Dave keeps rubbing off on me. And the details don't matter as much as, uh, as they used to. But once in a while, man, they're nice to have. Like those tangent cars, just wow. So I've got two more cars I want to show you. And we're going to go over a couple of things. So out of my run of buying these cars, uh, all the weathered cars you see, the box cars, I purchased um, at a swap meet. And I gotta say, I'm very happy with them overall, and I think these are two of my favorites. One thing I want to point out is they have metal wheels, metal couplers, but the wheels are not weathered. The gentleman who sells these, Steve, um, he makes sure that when he's selling these cars, even at 10 bucks a piece, even the weathered ones all have metal wheels and metal couplers. That is a bargain 7 out of 7 days of the week, and doubly so on the weekends. Now, I just want to point out the weathering job that's on these. I don't know what this person did, if it was an airbrush or a wash, but this one's grimy, this one's dusty. That was probably, behind, that was probably in the city, and this is probably out in the, um, the Pacific Northwest, the woods, somewhere dusty, uh, maybe salty. Um, this one is definitely seeing a lot more soot, seeing a lot more uh, grime. Uh, the ends are nicely done, not too crazy, just a little bit of rust on the end there, very tasteful. Nice and dusty over here, just like you'd see up in the mountains. Perfect to fit in with my Milwaukee Road. Um, on the other, opposite side, this one's a little bit lighter over here, but it gets nice and dirty by the wheels where all the brake dust and all the stuff gets kicked up. Um, this one's just kind of grimy all over, and it looks great. Um, probably not seeing as much of the mountains as some of the others, I mean, the SP was nicely weathered for the desert, you know, with the dust and sand and stuff getting kicked up. But that Norfolk and Western, nicely done for something that moves around inside the city. Now, one thing that's very important to me is how well the grab irons are done. Because when you're doing these, I haven't weathered a whole lot myself in the last 20 years. Um, I used to do it when I was younger and I was involved with the NMRA, but I, I haven't touched a car in the last 20 years. Um, is, is the is it can pool if you're using um, any kind of liquid it can pool 
So you have to be careful with that. Sometimes it turns out nice, sometimes it doesn't. But with hand applied details, it stands out a little bit easier. Things don't pull in places and it comes out very nicely. So these guys, all I'm going to do is paint the, um, probably paint the trucks a little bit on this guy. And then um, put, uh, I might even put roller bearing trucks on this because this has got the friction bearing trucks. But uh, paint the wheels, throw a little something on the trucks and, and these are done. I mean, right here, $60 worth, all in this frame, right there. That's $60 worth of equipment. It's perfect. For $10 a car, you get metal wheels, metal couplers. That's that's amazing any day of the week. Uh, so anyone who's selling this stuff, you know, more power to you. Uh, if you put metal, if you make sure it's got metal wheels and metal couplers, that's great. The only thing I have to do with this stuff when I get it is make sure that the couplers are to a good height. Whether it means changing out the wheels or adding some spacers to the truck or bolster, that's or that's it. Um, one thing I do do when I before I buy these is I set them down on a table. I look to see if the car sits level or not. So this one there, you can see, is nice and level, sits square and flush. Once in a while, with older equipment, some of those kits, the bodies rock on them and they sit crooked. Sometimes you can fix it. Sometimes it keeps falling back to its old ways. But these are all in excellent shape. It was an easy buy. And that's what I usually look for. Metal wheels, metal couplers, decent weathering. And that the car sits square. That's it. I can change out the couplers. I can change out the wheels if I need to. Um, I mean, honestly, with plastic couplers and plastic wheels, with these weathered, I still would have done it at $10. Uh, but I would be interested to know what you guys do when you buy stuff. If you prefer buying new or used, do you like buying weathered stuff? When I've sold weathered stuff in the past, I took a beating on it because it, it it's, it's been hard. I feel like weathered rolling stock getting bought used is starting to come around, become more popular because more people have done it. Um, and that the prices can come up a little bit with it. But with that said, that wraps this up. I'm really happy with these. Uh, locomotives are a whole nother situation. I really don't like buying used locomotives unless they're from a friend. Um, and when you get into DCC and sound and custom wiring and all that stuff, it really gets to be a rat's nest of things. I really don't like dealing with it, but with rolling stock, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, so that's it. Thank you for watching Sean's Trains. Let me know down in the comments if you like buying used rolling stock. Do you like weathered rolling stock? Do you prefer to do your own weathering? And what do you make sure you do to your rolling stock? All these guys I'm going to go through, tune the trucks with the micro, or uh, micro, it's a truck tuner. I don't remember who made it. Uh, micro engineering. No, that doesn't sound right either. Anyway. Um, so I'll probably do that with all these. They seem to roll good. I'm going to run them at Superior Scenics this weekend. We're going to see how these do with all the new stuff while we test some locomotives. And I can't wait to see them in action because these things are beautiful. So with that said, thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next video. Happy modeling.